2020 is the year the Grinch stole Christmas. But the Grinch isn't the green monster out of a children's story. The Grinch of 2020 wears a white lab coat or a suit, and he says he's here to protect us. Today is Black Friday. Rather than being the day when retail businesses go from operating in the red to starting to turn a profit, it's when Americans across the country are moving into lockdown 2.0. On Friday, November 27th, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti announced the city will be going under lockdown again on Monday. This is happening in cities across the nation. It's unlikely Christmas shopping will be considered essential. Instead of possibly recovering from the losses of the 2020 lockdowns, businesses will go deeper into debt. The most profitable period of the year has been stolen from them. More people will be out of work, more businesses will close their doors, more people will lose their homes. We're being told this is happening because selfish people didn't do their part, because we didn't lock down hard enough the first time. That's a lie. What's actually happened in 2020 is considerably different from what the media has told us. On February 26th, the San Francisco mayor declared an emergency due to the virus. This greatly expanded her authority, but at the time, San Francisco had zero cases. On March 11, 2020, Los Angeles County had one death, the first, attributed to the virus. Governor Gavin Newsom immediately ordered the state's 40 million residents to avoid crowds, sporting events, concerts, etc. One person out of 40 million had died. That prompted the chain of drastic and unconstitutional actions that followed. On March 12th, Disneyland is closed. March 15th, Governor Newsom ordered all bars, nightclubs, and wineries closed. March 16th, all gyms, movie theaters, entertainment centers, schools, and restaurants are ordered to close. Restaurants can be open for takeout and delivery only. March 17th, the courts are all closed. Spacious outdoor campgrounds where there's very little risk of spreading the virus are closed the following day. Then on March 19th, Newsom did the unthinkable. All 40 million California residents are ordered to stay at home. We were told it was just for two weeks to slow the spread, to give the hospitals time to prepare for the millions of sick people that would overwhelm them. Two weeks became several months. The lockdown wasn't eased until late June. At first, the beaches remained open. But media reports of massive crowds flocking to the beaches resulted in the beaches being shut down on March 23rd. I filmed the beaches at the time the overcrowding was said to occur. They were nearly deserted. There was no overcrowding. On April 7th, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti mandated wearing face masks. Media reported horrifying stories of overwhelmed hospitals. One account talked of long lines of sick people in the overflow tents at a hospital near me. I went by day after day and filmed it. It was deserted. Our convention center was converted into a massive field hospital. It never treated a single patient. The U.S. Navy Mercy Hospital ship with a staff of 800 medical personnel was brought to Los Angeles Harbor. After two months it departed, having seen only a few patients. During that time, our hospitals never came even close to capacity. In fact, they were laying off nurses. During the months of the initial lockdown, Los Angeles looked like something out of the apocalypse. The airport, train, and metro stations were abandoned. Businesses were shuttered, tourist attractions were empty, and the streets were deserted. Angelinos were staying home. We were doing our part. I saw it. My own eyes observed it. I filmed it. Yet the media constantly reported lockdowns didn't end because everybody didn't do their part. And that's a lie. California was the first state to lock down. It did so after one out of 40 million California residents died of the virus. It had the strictest lockdowns and was the slowest to reopen. According to Google Maps data, Californians also complied with lockdown orders better than any other state. Yet, according to a July 22nd article in Forbes, California had the highest number of cases once the initial stay-at-home order ended. Either the lockdown didn't work, 
or the cases that were used to justify shutting businesses down again were fictional. Many businesses didn't survive the shutdown, for lease signs began to appear everywhere. And as Los Angeles began to slowly reopen, the businesses that survived had to endure a never-ending roller coaster of reopening a great expense only to be shut down again. Rather than being able to start climbing out of the massive debt they incurred, the repeated reopening and closing drove them even deeper into debt. The lockdowns were relaxed a bit in July. Social distancing, mask orders, and reduced capacity mandates never ended after a two-week shutdown to slow the spread. And now the world is moving into lockdown 2.0. The lingo has changed. Two weeks slow the spread became flat in the curb. Now it's stopped the surge. But the agenda is the same. Near the election, new free testing centers erupted all over Los Angeles. People were getting tested in record numbers. And it's a well-known fact that the test is prone to producing false positive results. The media is reporting positive test results, not new cases. Not how many people are actually getting sick. There's a difference, and it's a big difference. Mainstream media also isn't reporting how much the deaths have gone down. It's completely ignored the pesky little fact that as more people are being tested, we learn that the death rate from the virus is shockingly minute. These little facts that contradict the narrative are omitted. Despite our efforts and sacrifice, Los Angeles announced on November 23, 2020, that all outdoor dining in Los Angeles County restaurants would be prohibited. It would go into effect the day before Thanksgiving. Statewide, Californians were told they couldn't spend Thanksgiving with their families. People arriving in Los Angeles by train or air had to sign a form saying they agreed to quarantine for 14 days. That ended any plans of spending Thanksgiving with their family. Just like back in March when it all started, the restrictions grow each day. On Friday, November 27th, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti announced the city will be going under a full lockdown again on Monday. Just in time for the Christmas shopping season. How many businesses will be able to survive this final blow? When the initial lockdown occurred, many alert people spoke out and said it was a violation of our constitutional rights. It is. They warned that if we permitted our politicians to get away with it then, they would do it again. They did. Regardless of what we're being told, the restrictions that have been placed on us have done nothing to slow the spread of the virus. Had they done so, they would not be locking us down again, would they? At this point, it's obvious the lockdowns and restrictions ushered in by the United Nations, our medical authorities, and our politicians have only made things worse. We can only conclude that that's what they intended. Through manufactured fear, they obtained our consent to steal our rights. Without our consent, they couldn't have done so. They've made it quite clear they'll continue to abuse our rights as long as we allow it. How long will we allow this to continue? Isn't it time we said enough is enough?